better angle. Hey, what do you see from Florida State when you're watching them, their defense? Uh, really fast, athletic, strong defense that's going to, you know, obviously pose a lot of challenges for us. And, you know, we're looking forward to the challenges uh, that are on the horizon. And, you know, hopefully, you know, we're going to have a great game. Great to see from Darwin James specifically. Right. Um, you know, a really versatile guy who can do a lot of things on the field. You know, um, we're really going to have to prepare for him because he's a very good player. And um, we're really going to, you know, have to keep an eye on him because of what he can do on the field. So, very impressive player. How tough is it to scout him? Just seeing as he was out so much last year, didn't play right. a lot. I mean, what are you guys? Are you guys watching film from two years right. ago? Right. Yeah. So you know, he has film from you know his freshman year and um, just everything that he did in that year. You know, really, you know, is a good indicator of what he can do now, but probably better because he's got you know a whole other year of development and growth. Um, so really, you know, studying that past game plan is really what we're trying to do. Your coaches have, have talked about uh, Derwin, they could play all 11 spots. I mean, they've even joked about right. playing nose guard. You know, don't think that's going to happen. But how, how versatile is that legitimately, especially compared to a guy like Minka? Can right. that play everywhere in the secondary? Right. Well, I mean, I would say like a lot like Minka, just like you said, because you know when you have a guy that's that's like that, they can do so many different things on the field. He, he poses a matchup problem because you don't know where he's, exactly he's going to line up, and wherever he does line up, you have to make sure you have him in check. Um, so someone who can do that obviously poses a big threat, and that's something that we're going to have to you know keep an eye on out throughout the game and always make sure we know exactly where he is and what he's going to do. Working with Coach Dayball, he's worked with so many unbelievable tight ends, Gronkowski, Bennett. Has he been able to take your game to another level? Absolutely. Um, you know, just little things that he can tell us. You know, I did so and so with Gronk. I did this with Martellus Bennett. You know, it's you know it's incredible to say to find all these new little tricks and tips that he has. You know, and really just helping us take our game to a new level because of all this little knowledge that he has. Um, definitely, I think you know all of our tight ends have definitely picked up great valuable assets from him that we wouldn't have had unless he didn't come here. Do you feel like tight ends are going to thrive in this system potentially more than you did with Coach Saban's off or Coach Kiffin's offense? You no, know, I really hope so, but you know that's you know to be foreseen. You know we're definitely going to work as hard as we can every day and you know put our nose to the grindstone and, and hopefully you know we we get some more opportunities. Do you guys do any kind of interesting drills like I mean just in traffic? Uh, yeah, um, we'll do a lot of different stuff. You know, that's obviously a big part of, of being a tight end is being able to catch the ball in traffic because we're going to have, you know, people all over us. So we'll do stuff like that. Um, you know, just overall hand strength, um, blocking, you know, positioning, footwork, all that stuff is, is pretty standard for What's us. What's the most strangest drill that Coach Davis put? The strangest yeah. drill? Hmm. I mean, I don't know if it's too like strange. Like it's all pretty, pretty standard. You know what we're used to. Um, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say anything's like strange by any means. Yeah. What have you seen from Irv Smith, especially in the passing game? How much has he improved? Right. Uh, really fast guy who who runs really good routes and um, who's really taken his blocking to a new level. And you know we're really excited with the progress that he's made and um, the contribution he's going to be able to make for us this year is going to be very important. Um, for the whole tight end group, and you know, I've really seen a guy who's who's really came into his own, uh, especially this this off season and, and this spring and this uh, fall camp. So, really excited for how he's developing, and you know, excited to play with him. More specifically, has Miller gotten better as a blocker? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Miller's definitely gotten better as a blocker, um, and not to say he was bad before. You know, obviously, I'm not saying that, but just what he did, you know, from last season to now, he's definitely made strides, um, and. Uh, you know, I've really seen him come to his own also in the passing game. Um, you know, just being able to, you know, run better routes just like Irv. I mean, they're, they've both gotten really good. And so, you know, I'm really excited with the amount of depth we have at tight end. And, you know, I'm really looking forward to, you know, sharing the field with these guys. What are the challenges to forming combo blocks with the, the right or left tackle, depending on where you are in the line? You know, when you're there, what, what you have to, I'm, I hear from the offensive linemen, they have to have that chemistry, knowing where they're going to do what. They're that the same for a tight end as well. Right. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. The the communication that's involved with with working with the tackles and also another tight end that's in the game is is something that you have to hone in on and uh, work on every day because that's something that's tricky out on the field. You know, is how exactly we're going to block this and what do we need to do in order to get this done. Uh, that's. Definitely something that we've been working on a lot, and that's always one of the hardest parts about uh, being a tight end is learning those combination blocks. What are Florida State's edge rushers like? Have you seen them? Yeah, really, really 
fast, explosive, long. Um, obviously, very good pass rushers. Uh, so, you know, we're going to have to do our best to you know, keep them in check and really have a good week of preparation in order to, you know, mitigate some of that because they're they're very effective. Is that going to be one of the bigger challenges that you guys think you could face even this year? Or? Absolutely. Um, you know, one of the best defenses by far I've ever seen. And, um, we're definitely going to have to, you know, keep them in check, like I said, because they could, you know, they could really pose a problem for us. I know uh, under Nick, it's always, you know, when we get time, don't look, you know, beyond or anything like right. that. But as a team, do you all kind of approach this game as a, just a one-week season a little bit, knowing that it really won't win or lose, it won't affect kind of the conference or any of that kind of thing? Well, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that because obviously – the game in front of us is the most important one, and and especially with a game like this that has you know so much, so much riding behind it. You know they're obviously a great, great opponent, and we really need to you know put all of our eggs in this basket and really make sure that we you know do everything we can to be prepared for Florida State because they're so good. And so you know we are definitely you know locked in on Florida State, and that's the only thing we're thinking about right now. Anything else? Thanks, Hale. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.